So we're now going to add a couple of additional rules just so we can make sure that this can be extended. And the first thing that we're going to do is create a very simple additional rule, and that is checking if a string is alphanumeric or not. Um, so this relates to something like a username, where you may want a username to not contain any special characters. You might want it to just be something like, for example, Alex123. So let's uh, define this additional rule. We're going to say alph, uh, alpha numeric true. Or we could just say something like alnum. So we want this to be uh, alphanumeric. So any letters from the alphabet and any numbers. So inside of validator, we want to go ahead and add this as additional rule. So alnum. And we also want to add a message as well. So this is going to be alnum. Uh, that is not a, or rather we should say, the field field must be alpha numeric or more sort of appropriately to a uh, user must contain only letters and numbers. You could just write that. So down here, what we want to do then is introduce this new method. So let's just copy and paste this for the sake of uh, simplicity. And we'll say alnum, remember the name, uh, the same function name as the rule. And then in here, we've got the field value and the satisfier. So in here, we can actually use the C type alnum function. This takes a string value and returns a true or false value, so a boolean. And obviously, this is just going to be value. So in this case, now we can uh, just submit. In actual fact, let's change this to all and get rid of the key. So now it's saying the username field must be alphanumeric. Let's provide some uh, correct information here. So this is now okay, but now in the username, uh, if we just submit, we can see that that's all okay. In the username, we'll change this so only this fails. So Alex with an exclamation mark would be invalid the username field must be alphanumeric, whereas something like Alex123 is absolutely fine. So that's an example of adding a very simple rule. What we're now going to do is actually extend the form a little bit, um, and we're going to add two password fields, and we're going to check if these two fields match, and then we're going to have a few things that we may need to update uh, within our class for this to actually work. So let's say password, and say repeat password. So this is quite a common um, uh, example, we, we normally see that we have to repeat passwords. So let's call one password and one password again. Uh, sorry, that should be password again there. So we've now got this additional field. So we need to type a password in here and a password in here. Um, so what we want to do is we want to say something like password and we want password again. Now, we need this to be required, but we could actually omit this because if we have something like must match this password field here, that means that it, this also must, or this also must fulfill these requirements. Um, so in this case, we can just remove all of these. There's no need to redefine them rules for something that should match something else. So we must, we'll, we'll say uh, match, password. Now bear in mind, this isn't the string that it should match, it's the, uh, the same uh, value that it should match. So we want to say the password again must be the exact match for the other field called password. So again, like I said, we need to make a couple of adjustments in here. Because what's going to happen here is if we just add all of our 
other things in, so match, match, and in here, uh, the field or the field must match. Now let's change that to the field. Field must match the. Uh, and we could say something like field match field. So we can replace these in like we did before. But the first thing that we want to do is we need to compare these. If we if we think about uh, adding this method, we're going to have a method called match with the same arguments in. We can keep these same arguments in. But what's going to happen is we need to say return the first field or the first field's value is equal to something. And this will return true or false. Now, where do we get this other uh, field from? Well, what's actually going to happen here is um, this is going to uh, basically grab the value of it that's stored somewhere. Um, and this is a little bit difficult because we're not actually storing the items anywhere. So I'm going to create a method up here a property up here called items and what I'm going to do is here I'm going to say this items equals items so now inside of here we have access to this items and then we can pass in a value like password password again so let's just run through what's happening here we are we, we've got a field called password again and we want this to match to the password. So this is the value. So really what we need to do is we need, uh, sorry, this is the satisfier. So what we need to do is we need to say that the satisfier is going to be uh, the field we need to look up. So the value here is going to be the value of um, what, whatever we're given. Um, and then the satisfier needs to be looked up. So to test this out, let's do an echo on the satisfier here and we'll follow that by the value. So let's just kill at this point. So we'll do a little bit of debugging. So when we submit, we've got password here. So the reason this isn't displaying is we didn't enter both. So I'm going to enter um, password in here and one, two, three, four, five in here. So that's a password for the original value and one, two, three, four, five for the password again. They obviously don't match. So if we remove this, this will basically return true or false. If it's false, that means that password doesn't equal one, two, three, four, five in that last example. And that's true. So let's now fill this in and see what we get. We'll notice that we get a problem and the error message I entered earlier is also going to be an issue but we can now look at what we can do to resolve this so I'm going to type in password and one two three four five six and we see that we get the password again field must match the password again match field this is a little bit confusing the reason this has happened is I've entered this field match placeholder here uh, which field is getting replaced here as well leaving that underscore match now we don't actually need to do this field match What's happening here, remember, is we're using the satisfier name to access that value. Therefore, within here, the satisfier is the field that we want it to match. So we can literally just pass in satisfier here. When we refresh, we see it says the password again field must match the password field. So we've added a couple more elements to this validator, and it just goes to show how easy it is to expand this for your needs.